Like and subscribe right now, or this spider is gonna crawl on your face while you're sleeping. Top 10 terrifying parasites that will keep you up at night. We have never met many individuals who enjoy slimy and creepy crawly things. Among some of the nasty things that nature provides our planet are grouped into categories of parasites. We hate them, but they sure love us. In the world of science, anything that feeds on its host for nutrition is a parasite. And we have to hand it to science and commend those who have chosen to study these types of organisms. So out of respect for entomologists everywhere, and, and to gross out those of you who fit in the category of slimy and creepy crawly haters, today's video is dedicated to you. This list is in no particular order of disgustingness, and this list does not, in any way, cover all classes and categories of parasites. So if you know of a parasite you think should have been on this list, let us know in the comments below. So without further delay, here are the 10 most terrifying parasites that will keep you up at night. Let's go. Number 10. Bedbugs Some of you may not know that bedbugs are actually more than just cute little goodnight rhymes that your parents said to you before you went to sleep. Bedbugs have been on the rise lately, and there are several theories as to why. Some point to increased international travel, while others blame the lack of bedbug-killing insecticides, most popularly DDT, as well as increased use of gel-based insecticides, which is absolutely useless as these little creatures feed on nothing else but blood. The bedbug is like a small tick that typically lives in and around the area of the mattress. They feed mostly during the night, although they have been known to feed during any hour of the day. Due to their small size, the bedbug can hide in mattresses, mattress seams, baseboards, headboards, screw holes, carpets, cracks in the walls, bedroom clutter, particularly anywhere in and around the bedroom. Bedbugs have been known to nest and walk as far as 100 feet in order to feed on their host. The bites they leave are usually mistaken as mosquito or spider bites, since the irritation and redness is very much the same. There is no scientific evidence that they spread disease, although the bite sites may become infected due to scratching the bites. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that will take just 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal, you just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell and you get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 9. Lice The human louse is an epidemic affecting both children and adults, though children seem to be more susceptible to infestation. There are many different types of lice. The most commonly known is head lice, though there is also the body louse and the pubic louse. These aforementioned lice species are the only ones that are solely reliant upon humans for blood. Other species exist but are limited to other animals. The life of the louse is somewhat short. The eggs will hatch within 6 to 9 days, after which the nymph will molt 3 times over a 7 day period before becoming an adult. The molted shells and eggshells remain attached to the hair near the scalp. The adults are very fast moving and will usually live for about a month while feeding on blood and continuing to breed and produce eggs. The female louse is able to produce between 7 to 12 eggs per day. Lice are very little yet easily detectable. Noticeable itching and redness occur around the infested area as well as the occasional pustule. A fine toothed comb or a louse comb can be used to capture eggs and the lice themselves. Over the counter and prescription medications can be used to rid the host of the lice. It is also advised that everyone within the household be checked for lice as well, as reoccurrence is common. Number 8. Leeches A common misconception surrounding leeches is that all of them are completely reliant on blood from animals and humans. Blood-seeking leeches are only one type of leech. Some species of leeches feed on invertebrates and do not live in the water, but on the moist earthen floor and, under more dry circumstances, underground. Leeches are segmented worms closely related to the common earthworm. The sanguivorous or blood-sucking leech is most often found in still or slowly moving water, but can also be found on land. The usual method of attachment to a host is by waiting on the ground or on the floor of a body of water. Here they spend their time sensing movements or changes in light patterns, and as soon as they find a suitable host, they pounce. The leech will use the sucker part of its mouth, and the jawed leech will use its many-toothed jaw to create an incision on the host. Afterwards, the leech will secrete mucus-like substances in order to remain attached to the host. The leech then relaxes its body after using anticoagulants and a histamine to prevent clotting of blood and also prevent the blood from turning indigestible. This is the amazing attribute of leeches that aids in using them for medical purposes. The wound is not as bad as you might think. It may become irritated and ooze blood and fluid for several hours, but loss of blood is minimal. Infections are rare, and although allergic reactions do happen, they are usually nothing to concern oneself about. Number 7. Ticks 
ticks are classified as arachnids, and there are many, many different varieties both hard and soft. The most commonly known are the black leg tick, the lone star tick, and the deer tick and the dog tick. The ticks are capable of carrying diseases as well. The most well known are Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Lyme Disease. Ticks are usually found in areas with heavy underbrush, high weeds and grass, as well as areas commonly traversed by deer and horses. The tick will wait in this type of environment until a suitable host walks by, where it will grab hold and work its way towards a suitable area of the body, most often where an abundance of hair is present. On humans, this is usually the scalp, but on other mammals this could be anywhere. This allows the tick to remain virtually undetected for several weeks as it gorges on the blood of the host. Many people have had ticks and many people have had to remove one. There are common misconceptions on how to remove ticks. Some people say to use the hot end of a match on the tick or to spread a salve or petroleum jelly on the tick so that it will be unable to breathe and remove itself. These methods are both ineffective and unsafe. As the tick could become agitated and regurgitate in the area in which it was attached, thus increasing the possibility of disease or infection. So beware. Number 6. Fleas The flea is another common parasite. These things easily reproduce and can become a very big problem in a short period of time. Have you ever heard of the Black Plague? You can thank the flea for that. Like mosquitoes, fleas need blood from mammalian hosts in order to reproduce. Fleas will lay their eggs on the host, which usually leads to an infestation of fleas originating around where the host most often resides, such as a pet sleeping area. After three separate larval stages, the flea will create a silk-like cocoon and merge after an addition of one to two weeks. It is now time for the flea to find a host and begin providing blood for a new generation of offspring. In the small life of the flea, usually a few weeks, the female can lay several hundred eggs. This can lead to a severe infestation in almost no time at all. Fleas are very versatile. Their bodies are flattened laterally to allow them to move easily on their host and also avoid being crushed. Their ability to jump is also a marvel. They have been known to jump over 100 times their body length. The fleas that typically bite humans are often cat fleas. Number 5. Mosquitoes I am sure that most of us have been bitten by a mosquito before. These pesky flying insects are not only a nuisance but also a deadly health threat. They can carry many different types of parasites and diseases which cause conditions such as West Nile virus, malaria, yellow fever, and even inject a parasite which can cause elephantiasis. Mosquitoes are responsible for millions of deaths due to their ability to carry diseases from host to host. The mosquito needs blood in order to reproduce. Therefore, it is the female of the species that is responsible for biting mammals. Interestingly enough, both the male and female mosquitoes regularly feed on nectar from flowers and fruits. However, the female requires the necessary proteins from blood to reproduce. The mosquito is attracted to a person's body heat and also their scent, if you will. It is advised that you avoid heavy perfumes and colognes since they are attracted to sweet smells. However, this is not a complete deterrent. Number 4. Mites Mites are a very common type of organism. There are many classifications of mites including but not limited to dust, fowl, dog, deer, chigger, and scabies mites just to name a few. There are even mites living on you right now called hair follicle mites that are feeding on the oily secretions from your hair and scalp, but don't worry, these mites are a normal part of the living process for us humans, and those of us with good hygiene will never even notice that they exist since they are microscopic and completely harmless. Most of the times, mites do not pose any type of threat or problems to humans, but the mites will feed on the blood of humans if the usual host is unavailable. The most common mites that cause problems for humans are scabies. These microscopic parasites can cause extreme itching and red lesions on infected areas as they live their lives in and on the skin. Oftentimes, the infection is diagnosed as parasitic dermatitis and can be easily treated with prescription topical ointments. Number 3. Human Bot Flies Bot fly is a rather broad term given to any species of fly whose larvae live as parasites within the body of mammals. This can include anything from horses to sheep and deer and, as the title indicates, humans. This parasitic fly, known as the human bot fly, has an affection for an odd nesting ground, humans. The female D. hominis actually catches a mosquito, plants its eggs on it, and then lets the mosquito fly away. When the mosquito feasts on a host, the egg falls off into the mosquito's bite, or the larva crawls in. The larva then lives under the skin for between 5 to 12 weeks as it grows and matures. When it's ready, the larva crawls out of the mosquito bite and drops to the ground for a pupa stage. Although it is famous for affecting humans, the so-called human botfly can actually utilize a large variety of mammals as hosts. 
Fortunately, the botfly maga can usually be extracted relatively easily. Number 2. Tapeworms Tapeworms are similar to hookworms. They are intestinal parasites that can be transmitted through soil and fecal matter, but most often are ingested by humans through undercooked meats that have not been adequately cooked to kill the tapeworm eggs. The tapeworms set up shop in the muscles of the host animal after being ingested through the feeding of grass or contaminated vegetables. The animal is eventually slaughtered and becomes food for us as humans. The human host will ingest the tapeworm egg, and as digestion of the food occurs, the egg will eventually hatch and grow from a larva to an adult while feeding on blood and nutrients via the intestinal wall. The adults can then produce more eggs which will be released from the body through the stool. The eggs can linger around the toilet bowl or can even be flushed down the commode where they can infest the soil through sewage and irrigation water, thus beginning the cycle all over again. These parasites have been known to live for a few decades if left untreated. Number 1. Hookworms The hookworm is transmitted through fecal matter. The eggs will hatch within about a week and grow into larvae, which could then live for close to a month within the soil of the earth or the feces which bore them. Upon contact with humans, usually through the foot, the worm will work itself through the host's veins, into the heart and eventually the lungs. After entering the lungs, they are sometimes expelled through mucus during cough or simply swallowed by themselves. This gives the worm a one-way ticket to the small intestine. After setting up residence in the intestine, the worm will attach itself to the intestinal wall and begin feeding on the host's blood. If left undetected and untreated, the hookworm can reproduce resulting in a serious intestinal infestation. This can lead to anemia, extreme abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, and even a bizarre hunger for inedible things like dirt and mud. The life cycle of the worm begins anew when the host releases more eggs through bowel movements. Truly, nature is scary.